My name is Abby. Hi, my name is Arthi, and we're from the Mississauga Library. <gasps> what is that? Oh, this old thing? It's my very own flying dragon. How did you do that? How did you get it to flap its wings? I want to make one too! I love dragons! I know! Me too! Did you know that the dragon appears in the mythology of many different cultures? From the Tibetan thunder dragon, to Bahamut in Arabia, to Fafnir in Norse mythology. Sometimes I don't even know which one or ten I like most. Me neither. But I definitely love the ones with flying wings. Hence, I made my very own flying dragon. All right, I'm sold. What do we need to make this dragon? You'll need two different color paper, scissors, pipe cleaners, ruler, pencil, a straw, and some tape. First, cut five rectangles that are four inches by one inch and use the rectangles to make rings by taping the ends of the rings closed. Each should be slightly smaller than the last so that it makes a more realistic tapered body. Cut a half inch by 5.5 inch strip and then use this to attach your five rings together. Next, let's make the head and tail of the dragon. You can use different books to see how you can decorate and color your dragon. The library has tons of resources that could help you do that. Or you can use the design that we used for our dragon. Use the torso as a template to measure how tall the head needs to be. Draw the head and neck, then cut them out. To attach them to the torso, add two flaps to each side with tape. Then insert the head into the torso and make sure the tape sticks to the inside of the first ring. Do the same thing with the tail and attach it into the smallest ring. If you want to add scales, draw them slightly smaller as you go down the body to match the tapering effect of the rings. This creates a more realistic tapered body. We drew on the scales after we taped on the head and tail, but it might be easier for you to do this beforehand. You can use the torso as a template again to make sure the wings are a good size. Fold your paper in half and then draw your dragon's wings. Cut out both wings at once and then cut them apart. Next, you can decorate your wings as you wish. When you're finished decorating them, tape them to the torso. Make sure you only connect them to one of the torso rings. Tape the top of and the bottom together so that it stays on securely as your dragon flies. To add the straw, cut a half inch long cut into one end of the straw and then cut another half inch long cut that's parallel to the first one. Then fold the two sides of the straw. Tape the flat sides of the straw onto the torso of the dragon in between the wings. Next, take your pipe cleaner and cut it in half. Fold the top of the pipe cleaner down and then tape the folded down part onto the wing. Do the same with the other wing. Wrap the pipe cleaner securely around the straw and then make sure they are wrapped next to each other. Now let's see if your dragon can fly! With one hand, hold the straw and hold the pipe cleaner with the other. Pull and push the pipe cleaner up and down to make the wings flap. So it looks like the dragon actually uses the same mechanism as an umbrella! Boink! So the pipe cleaners act as the runner as well as the ribs of the umbrella. That's right. The runner is pushed up or down the umbrella pole, and that in turn opens up and stretches the ribs or stretchers outward to open up the umbrella and inward to close the umbrella. The main difference between the umbrella and the dragon puppet is that the dragon puppet only has two stretchers that open up the wings, whereas the umbrella has many, many more. I can't wait to make my own mighty dragon. So that's about it. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our library website and social media channels. Thanks, Thanks and, and see, see you see next, next time. time. Cute, um, how to train your dragon soundtrack. Do, 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 do.